Hello, I'm Dynas Demir. So I reached out to another friend of mine. I said, look, you know, I need to go on vacation somewhere. Where should I go? He said, go to Africa. And not only am I going to go, I'm going to explore a new country. So I went to Tanzania, South Africa, Namibia, Mali, Senegal, Morocco, Liberia, Namibia, Kenya, the Voodoo Festival in Wida. Gambia, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire. Sierra Leone, Ghana, Nigeria. It's been, it's been a beautiful, experience just learning more about our culture our indigenous culture so who it means freedom in swahili i'm in search of my roots in finding that i would experience my uhuru which is freedom <laughs> and hires, diversity hires. You got a bunch of people who barely made it through college or barely made it to college based on a unfair advantage coming out of college indoctrinated based on white liberal ideologies and paradigms. Getting to the front of our, getting up in front of our people, getting on the biggest platforms and speaking for our people. And that's not right. Do you really believe Joy Reid knows how to fight for what's best for black people than me or Dinas or Fitzgerald or she even go black to Africa. No, but she rolled the diversity bus. She rolled the affirmative action bus to success. And because of affirmative action, she is, has one of the loudest voices, one of the largest platforms in the world when it comes to speaking on behalf of black people. And what in the, the reality is these people are the least qualified, but they know how to play the game. It's like the person who gets a job because basically they walk in and if the if they're if they're if they don't get the job on the spot, they make a threat. Hey, I'm gonna call the NAACP, this or that. Okay, is that person really the most qualified? Or is that person getting that position based on the fear of the of, of the company or the government entity of receiving backlash for not hiring that person because they're black? So we have a bunch of frauds and imposters up among, standing up in front of our people. And that's why I really support Herschel Walker. I will always support him because Herschel Walker has done something that Barack Obama could never do. Herschel Walker has done something that Jesse Jackson, Martin Luther King, all these people could never do. Herschel Walker was able to generate his own success in the real world, then carry that into politics. Donald Trump generated success in the real world, then carried that over to politics. If you look at who black people support politically, they're all just a bunch of bums who's only uh, their only claim to success or fame is being able to accept being whores for donor dollars by selling out their own people and America to anybody to the highest bidder. Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, look at them all. At least George W. Bush got rich off of oil. At least Donald Trump got rich off of uh, real estate. At least Herschel Walker got rich off the NFL. He put in work. And that's what I look at more than anything. 
what has what has Raphael Warnock done? Stand stand up in front of a church, oh Martin Luther King's church or whatever it is, I don't even know. Talk trash, right? Talk trash, then then get up and try to bring up Martin Luther King's name every time somebody challenges him on an issue versus Herschel Walker who put in the hours, the time, the dedication to get f- success in football and then translate that work ethic into politics. That's how you know who you should vote for. Who knows how to do it for real versus who's only in that position to be used as a hand puppet with one of these uh, groups hand up they butt. So throw that shit out the window. Biden, what has Biden ever created? He's been a politician for 40 years. That alone should be enough to tell you, I'm not voting for this guy. This guy has no success other than selling out. And, and that's all you need to know. And that's why fear is an excuse. Because you know what these people are capable of. And you know what they're not capable of. How can they deliver for you if they couldn't even deliver for them without selling you out? And that's all I'm going to say. Let me say this real briefly on the other side of that fear is self-accountability. And I know y'all talked about that several times because I've been listening. When they decide to vote back for Republican side or conservative, that's who we have always been as a people, except for the last 50, 60 years. So they don't want to talk Republican and conservative because why? That means that party wants you to be accountable for building a business, being self-sustainable as a people, not giving you all the handouts, the government subsidies that keeps you uh, dependent. So that's the other side of the fear is being accountability for yourself and your people as a collective. So that's why a lot of them still refuse to revolt Republican. It's not so much about the name, it's about getting back to your roots of being accountable to yourself and to your people and that's really period. They, that's what they, another part of the fear is of our people. Elder, I'd like to thank you for that point, but uh, you've been walking on the Lord's earth longer than, than, uh, than me and certainly longer this panel. And you've seen much more, much more than me. Um, my father, my father, who I'm blessed to still have him, he told me things got worse under integration and I'm inclined to believe the man. Uh, you, you know, he, he set up the, he, he, I was taught, you know, that, Hey, we, uh, we had our own communities. Our family was tight. We knew that no one else was going to do business. And all we had was our, ourselves. So we were thriving. Uh, but, you know, we were doing, do, doing, doing well. Sure. You had other things around it, but I come from a, I come from family fighters, man. Them cats stay strapped. You know, we wasn't worried about cause we, they, they, many of them guys I've seen were uh, clan members openly to come up there and drag people out the church. This is Alabama back in the right around turn of the century, back in 20. It was rough, man. And uh, the, the, those cats kept their guns, all the deacons like that. And and, and that, that's the way they operated. But they also kept self-sustaining farms. They also had their children working in the farm. They also, they also uh, uh, had economic clout and they worked as a unit. And, uh, and the communities worked as a unit because I knew that they knew that's all we have. I wish to, uh, I, I don't know how we got away from that, that as if as if our restaurants, you know, were not good enough compared to Woolco's or or Macy's Place or any other institution you want to name, and so we wholesale abandon our our, our things. So in that, and for that, uh, uh, integration was basically considered evil by me. Now I don't believe somebody. If I'm traveling up the, you know, uh, uh, Pennsylvania, I don't believe you had the right to deny me to stay in the hotel room while I'm doing interstate. Now that's that's all. Uh, that, that that that's wrong and that should that should not be allowed but dang it i don't have to abandon my own businesses my own people my own communities and you know and think that someone else got got some better taste than cornbread or syrup or like some viewers said, said of me in the in the chat it don't matter to me uh and, and you know i don't think you should have to blame abandon your pipe fitters and your construction workers who build your houses and things like that elder what happened I mean, t- 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 tell me what happened. I mean, you know, because I was born in 64. This thing was just kicking off. But it seemed like when Johnson signed that civil rights bill, man, it looked like we went to, we went to wholesale crazy. Fathers removed out of home. Drugs came in. People all over prayed on us. The, uh, the prison ducks were prophets. Why can't someone say, hey, you know, uh, like Malcolm Shabazz said, man, I don't believe in integration. You know, as opposed to taking the, the um, 
the 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 philosophy of, of Dr. King, like you know, love everybody. I don't believe in loving everybody. You know that you know uh, uh, go over there and and, and and marching in school. I'm a University of Alabama grad, but you know what? You know, uh, I got in there because a lady had to be walked in by marshals to go in there. But I'm I'm very cool if I would have went to Fisk or, or Southern or Howard or, or any of those other things. I, you know, it's I, I'm very cool with that sticking with uh, with my own institution. But it's been broken down so much. I'm afraid the generation uh, with the two generations is going to realize who we were before integrations and we did that for hundreds of years it looked like the black family just been destroyed man in a matter of something like 60 years and keep still the accelerator because we want to uh,